Michaela Pereira, a journalist, a morning person, and a West Coast girl. Join me for morning news with West Coast style. Michaela, weekday morning starting Monday, July 11th on HLN. Courtney Scott. I'm a travel blogger, filmmaker, and Expedia's resident travel expert. I spend most of my time on the road, and lately I've been taking inventory of my bad travel habits. Most of them relate to all the digital distractions in life. I used to look out the window, and now I look at my phone. And instead of eating my meal, I photograph it. If you find yourself in the same boat, here are some easy tips for staying present while traveling. My first tip is to rise with the sun. There is something so grounding about waking up with the morning sun. The city is calm and the sun gives you the energy and the motivation to have a great start to your day. It's impossible to remember everything that happens while you're on the road. That's why I like to keep a five minute daily travel journal. It doesn't have to be a novel, but by writing down some of the highlights of your day, it helps you remember the details and it's a fantastic memento to look back on when you get home. Plus, it's a nice opportunity to write rather than type. Mealtime is a sacred time to enjoy your food with family and friends. It's not a time to check your emails or to Snapchat every course of your meal, even though I've been guilty of both. The best way to avoid the temptation of your phone is to stash it away in your bag and turn off notifications. Even if you're a business traveler and you can't avoid your phone at all meals, try carving out a 10 minute break from your phone and it will do you good. Another really easy tip is to meditate. Meditation is a powerful tool that can help you calm your mind and the noise around you. And it can be done anywhere, from an airplane to a busy cafe. Start by sitting in a relaxed position, close your eyes and take some deep breaths. There are thousands of guided meditations online so you can pop in your headphones and meditate away. I hope these tips help you stay present while you're on the road. For more of my tips and travels, head to CourtneyScott.tv or follow me on Instagram. Take a ride with Jack, a 13-year-old boy from Virginia who just got his braces off and usually spends Saturday morning playing basketball with his friends. But he's also a young actor, and today we hired him to help us make a point. We asked him to take a drive around town, with his mother, of course, since he's not nearly old enough to drive a car. We pass shops where he isn't old enough to work the register. Then we stop at the convenience store to see Jack try to buy beer. The cashier can't believe he even tried. Literally, he looks like he's 12. At the next door, Jack tries to buy cigarettes with no luck. I'm so sorry if I sell you a cigarette. Later, he strikes out trying to buy racy magazine. You have to be 18 All right, okay, thank you. And then lottery tickets. Can I get a couple of scratch offs? How old are you? You got your ID? 13. You what? I'm 13. You can't get no scratch off, baby. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. It's laughable to everyone here the idea that we'd ever expose a 13-year-old to the dangers of a lottery ticket. But then we arrive here at the gun show. It should shoot pretty good for you. I'll take it. Within minutes, the 13-year-old easily and legally bought a 22 caliber rifle from a private seller and walked away with it. Interesting. Well, while federal law mandates you must be 18 to buy a gun from a licensed dealer, the sale in that video was made at a gun show and is considered a private sale. Private sales require less documentation about who is buying the gun and how frequently transactions like that are made.